Welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. I've written quite a few Tudor history books uh, and I spent every day uh, neck deep, or in fact over neck deep, in Tudor history. Um, okay, I am going to stay with Elizabeth I today. I did say yesterday that I might just stay at Tilbury Fort with the visit of Elizabeth I there in August 1588. Now, on the 9th of August 1588, Elizabeth I appeared before the troops that had gathered at Tilbury. And as I explained, these troops had gathered there to guard the Thames, uh, which of course would then be the approach to London from the expected uh, Spanish invasion, the Spanish Armada. And she gave her famous Tilbury speech. Now, there are no reliable eyewitness accounts of what Queen Elizabeth I actually wore that day. But tradition, and you'll always see it in, uh, in the movies as well, tradition places her on a massive horse, on a war horse, wearing a gown of white velvet and with a silver uh, cuirass, which um, is like sort of a breastplate and um, also has a back to it. So in armour as well, not full armour, but just with that bit on, on her front. And holding a silver truncheon in her hand as well, so being a real sort of warrior queen. In her article, The Myth of Elizabeth at Tilbury, Susan Fry points out that an analogy was being drawn between Elizabeth I and Britomart, the armed heroine of Edmund Spencer's The Fairy Queen, uh, this virgin knight of chastity and virtue. So, you know, these accounts of Elizabeth looking like that um, were all to do with drawing that analogy. Now, the most famous rendition of Elizabeth I's speech that day, and the bells are ringing out for her here, is from a letter from Dr. Lionel, and it's not Lionel, it's Lionel, Lionel Sharp to the Duke of Buckingham in the early 17th century. This is the one that is the most famous, the, the, the version of the speech that uh, we see uh, being given in famous sort of movies. Uh, Sharp was at Tilbury that day, but he was writing a lot later and he was writing from, from memory. And as Susan Fry notes, his letter also had a purpose, this letter in which he recited the speech. He was using uh, it to make a point in his letter. He was fearing at the time a proposed Spanish marriage um, of Prince Charles. Uh, so he was kind of making a point. So it might be that he changed the speech a little bit to sort of make a point. But I'm going to read to you his version of the speech. It's the most well-known one. And I apologise to Queen Elizabeth I because I'm not, not Elizabeth and I'm not an actress and I probably haven't got that... Uh, you know, the iconic Elizabeth I kind of feel, but I will try my best. My loving people, we have been persuaded by some that are careful of our safety to take heed how we commit ourselves to armed multitudes for fear of treachery. But I assure you, I do not desire to live to distrust my faithful and loving people. Let tyrants fear. I have, also, I have always so behaved myself that under God I have placed my chiefest strength and safeguard in the loyal hearts and goodwill of my subjects. And therefore I am come amongst you, as you see at this time, not for my recreation and disport, but being resolved in the midst and heat of the battle to live and die amongst you all, to lay down for my God and for my kingdom and my people, my honour and my blood, even in the dust. I know I have the body but of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king and of a king of England too and think foul scorn that Parma or Spain or any prince of Europe should dare to invade the borders of my realm. 
to which rather than any dishonour shall grow by me, I myself will take up arms, I myself will be your general, judge and rewarder of every one of your virtues in the field. I know already for your forwardness you have deserved rewards and crowns, and we do assure you in the word of a prince they shall be duly paid you. In the meantime, my Lieutenant General shall be in my stead than whom never prince commanded a more noble or worthy subject. Not doubting but by your obedience to my general, by your concord in the camp and your valour in the field, we shall shortly have a famous victory over those enemies of my God, of my kingdom and of my people. What an incredible speech. I mean, I'm, I'm no actress, but just sort of saying those words gives you some kind of, you know, power. And you can just imagine uh, how those men at Tilbury uh, felt listening to their queen come amongst them, saying that she was uh, willing to die with them. Uh, whether she really was, we shall never know. But what an incredible speech. But there is another version of the speech uh, that was recorded in 1612 by William Lee in a sermon. Oh, we've got some, uh, some shouting going on. It's fiesta time and all sorts in our village, so it does get rather busy at the moment. You can just imagine them as the troops of Tilbury while Elizabeth is visiting and giving them her support, jeering her on. So 1612, William Lee gave a sermon Queen, Queen Elizabeth paroled in her princely virtues, where he describes Elizabeth appearing before her troops at Tilbury with God in her heart and a commanding staff in her hand. And this actually may be more accurate, so I'm going to read this one to you as well. Come on now, my companions at arms and fellow soldiers in the field, now for the Lord, for your Queen and for the Kingdom. For what are these proud Philistines that they should revile the host of the living God? I have been your prince in peace, so will I be in war. Neither will I bid you go and fight, but come and let us fight the battle of the Lord. The enemy perhaps may challenge my sex, for that I am a woman. So may I likewise charge their mould, for that they are but men, whose breath is in their nostrils. And if God do not charge England with the sins of England, little do I fear their force. Si Deus nobiscum quis contra nos, if God is with us, who can be against us? Now I probably completely ruined that with my Latin there, but there you go. That version of the speech, the one ending, if God is with us, who can be against us, is corroborated by a very similar speech, which appears in text beneath a late 16th or early 17th century painting of Elizabeth. Elizabeth meeting the troops at Tilbury, um, and this painting is at St. Faith's Church in Gaywood. And it says, now for queen and for the kingdom, I have been your queen in peace, in war. Neither will I bid you go and fight, but come and let us fight the battle of the Lord. For what are these proud Philistines that they should revile the host of the living God? It may be that they will challenge my sex for that I am woman. So may I charge their mould for that they are but men whose breath is in their nostrils. And if God does not charge England with the sins of England, we shall not need to fear what Rome or Spain can do against us, whom is but an army of flesh, whereas with us, in the Lord our God, to fight our battles and to help with us, it skills not greatly if all the devils in hell be against us. So that is a very, very similar. Now, of course, Elizabeth delivered uh, this speech uh, to the troops of Tilbury and her doing that has been brought to life beautifully on screen um, in various movies and series. I, mean, I can think of actresses such as Glenda Jackson uh, giving this speech, Anne-Marie Duff, Helen Mirren and of course Kate Blanchett, all amazing actresses, all doing this speech on the silver screen. I'd love to 
to know which one is your favourite. Have you seen all of those series and movies? Have you seen all of those actresses giving the famous Tilbury speech? And if so, which one do you think did it the best? Which one would have you as a man at Tilbury wanting to fight with your queen against the Spanish forces? I'd love to know. So do leave a comment just telling me what you think. Thank you so much for joining me today. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking round about there. You can give this video a like if you've enjoyed it and you can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live as well. But I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, bye bye.